In this video, I want to show you how you can use the NAPLEX Blueprint as a student to increase your academic performance in pharmacy school. Hello, um, this is Michael Dankwa from Rx Calculations. So, a number of things happen when I encounter pharmacy students throughout their time in pharmacy school. Um, at the beginning of the program, most of them have some concept of what this pharmacy school experience should be like. You have some students who think it's going to be a long, meandering road with no end in sight. And you also have some students who are kind of ready. They have their backpacks all packed with all the uh, books and uh, material that they need. But they kind of see the road very blurry and murky. So the question that normally comes to mind is how exactly are students getting themselves ready for the program and ultimately to practice as a pharmacist? Do you, do you know where they are going? Now, a number of things need to be taken into consideration when you're in pharmacy school. You need to first be able to pass the exams throughout the program, otherwise you get kicked out. But ultimately, you should also be able to pass the NAPLEX board exams. Now, the NAPLEX is more or less like an entry-level requirement that the NABP, that's the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy, expect that students graduating have some kind of minimal knowledge to practice as a pharmacist. So, what I'm going to do really is give you some idea about how you can use what is known as the NAPLEX blueprint. For some reason, I find that most students haven't got the slightest clue what that document is about. It's kind of like some top secret, but I want to expose to you how you can use that as a tool to be better prepared in the program for your board exams and also kind of organize your academic process throughout your program. So let's think about it this way. Your end goal is the board exams. Um, otherwise you can't practice so let's we don't want to study for the test or the board exams but you want to keep that in mind as your end goal so it's kind of like this wonderful nice um, kind of um, building that we have so a very good home that you could basically look forward to when you are making all those six figures but this is an end goal now how do you get to have this wonderful edifice constructed you basically need what is known as a blueprint some kind of technical drawing some architectural that basically is needed for construction so regardless of how good um your construction workers may be without the blueprint they'll just be hammering away you're putting bricks all over the place so it's kind of always baffled me how students can actually begin a program like in a pharmacy school and simply having begun to think exactly what is needed for me to attain one of the important milestones in my life that is passing the board exams so that's where i want to uh, introduce students especially of it to the concept of using the blueprint the naplex blueprint as a platform to organize their learning experience as they go through the program so what I'm going to quickly do at this point is basically get out of this screenshot and we'll go to Google and I'll show you exactly how you can find this NAPLEX blueprint. So that's Google right there. And what you want to do is type NAPLEX blueprint. I believe if you type it's just going to show up. And so we go to the NABP National Association of Boards of Pharmacy. Just click on that. And what you want to download is what is known as the bulletin, the NAPLEX bulletin. Now that's a whole bunch of information that is needed um, when you're about to take the NAPLEX. So it has a lot of good information about um, how to register, um, the kind of testing conditions and all that good stuff. But what you are interested in, and this is particularly useful for you, especially at the beginning of the program, is to be able to go to page, I believe it's 23 in this document. And that is where you, 23 and 24 actually, and that is where you will find the NAPLEX blueprint. So think about it. This is almost synonymous or analogous to having the blueprint that you need to build that wonderful house. Here, the NABP actually tells you 
what they expect of you they don't give you the questions they don't tell you what's coming that's not the whole idea but they give you what i will call a very good framework framework for you to organize the information that you are receiving in in the in the program in the pharmacy school so it tells you what they expect of you they say there are two main areas area one which is ensure safe and effective pharmacotherapy and health outcomes it constitutes about 67 percent of the test and that includes things like kinetics mtm or dmtm however you call it in your place and all the other good stuff that you're receiving on a regular basis um the area the other area which is area two so there are two main areas the second area talks about the safe and accurate preparation compounding dispensing and administration of medications and provisions of healthcare products now this is 33 percent of the test so let me just spend a little bit of time here and illustrate exactly how this is beneficial you want to use this as some kind of mental framework a scaffold where information that is presented to you continuously throughout the program you're able to take that information and begin to logically arrange that information into the various components in this blueprint okay so if you take area two for example there are three them thematic um, components so you have 2.1 2.2 and 2.3 basically speaking okay so in 2.1 is basically talking about calculation so let me use calculations as an example of how we can utilize this as a very good framework and use that for um, our academic performance actually so here it says 2.1.1 talks about the patient's nutritional needs and content of nutrient sources so there are about five of them let's keep an eye on this so i'm going to go back to the slideshow and i'll just use that as an illustration of how we can basically go about using this blueprint to organize the information so under the calculations component, the first area was talking about patients' nutritional needs and the content of nutrients. For you as a student, the question should be, well, if I'm taking the calculations class or if it's an integrated program and it's embedded in other courses like maybe a dosage forms class or a kinetics class or some other class, what calculations component falls under this category? Have I already received that, um, that, that topic? Have I paid attention to it? So here, I can easily tell you that one of the things that will go then basically that's the, the, the whole section is total parental nutrition. So the, the moment you begin to talk about TPNs, uh, you want to know that, okay, this is an important segment. The thing about the blueprint that it also is beneficial for students is it helps you know what really is important or not. I hear students say, oh, this is not important. How, am i going to need this on the test well you may not need it on your test in the program at that point in time but you definitely would need tpns on your board exams actually it's one of the high frequency questions calculation questions that typically will show up so when you have some like total parental nutrition you want to ask yourself a few questions you know this topic is going to go under this section if i'm able to master this topic i basically have knocked out one of the major components under the calculations category okay so here you take that topic you put it under this section and then you say okay do i know the concept what exactly are tpn so you know what is used for you have some idea of the therapeutics and stuff but more importantly from a calculations point of view, do you know all the equations? Are you familiar with the Harvest Benedict equation or basically how do you calculate fluid requirements? Do you know the conversion factors? How do you, how many um, kilocals do you get from a gram of um, carbs or a gram of protein? Because you need to know these um, factors. For calculations, for example, you, you don't have an equation sheet on the board exams. So you need to know this factors by heart or memorize them essentially speaking then you want to ask yourself have i mastered the problem solving steps you know tpns could range from a simple proportion to one that involves like about 17 steps so probably you wouldn't have a question as about 17 steps on the board exams but at least you should know how to complete each successful step you should understand the logic behind each step right so that's something you want to keep in mind 
then ultimately you want to say, am I well practiced? Now, the thing about all these tests, whether you take a test uh, or an exam in school or on the board exams, I always recommend the Pareto rule, the application of the Pareto rule. For no matter how long you study, that studying time, basically reading and going through your notes and going through the test books, trying to understand the material, that's ultra important, but that should constitute 20% of your time. So if you spend an hour or two hours to really master the concepts, that's actually good investment. But if you spend two hours, you probably need to spend another eight hours practicing, doing targeted practice. So when I say well practice, it doesn't simply mean going over the lecture notes. That will be part of your studying time. But practice means practicing under simulated test conditions. Sit down and take, the, take those questions or take questions from a test book or from a test bank and sit down and say, okay, I'm going to do this 40 calculations questions and I'm going to do it in a time of about four, four, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, because you, you want to begin to look at the end goal in sight. In the board exams on the NAPLEX, each question is about a minute and some change. So yes, yeah, some questions from other sessions may take about a few seconds, but you still want to make sure that you have the right speed for something like a calculations type problem. So you want to get it right, but you want to get it right within the time frame. So this is how you can use the blueprint. You first identify the topic. Oh, I just got taught total parental nutrition. That's important. I got the concept. My professor explained it to me. But how well do I know the concept? How well have I mastered the equations? Do I know the conversion factors? Am I good at understanding the steps involved in solving this problem? Have I practiced well enough? And if you do this at the beginning, then by the time you're taking the board exams, it's almost going to be less stress on you because you've really mastered the material. You know what to expect in terms of the kind of material to cover. All right. So let's go through the others. The next section talked about drug concentration, ratio strengths, and extent of ionization. The first thing you want to do is what goes under this topic, right? So you want to know that the various ways you express concentration falls under this section. Ratio strength, percentage strength, PPM, parts per billion. Dilution and concentration. So allegation will fall under this section. Using the algebraic method to alter product strength. Stock um, solution calculations. All that stuff goes, basically any kind of scenario where you are going to reduce the strength or increase the concentration falls under this particular topic. So when you're doing this in class, Okay, I'm on my way. I'm almost there to basically completing what goes under this section. The third thing that goes there is obviously pH and buffers. All right. So you're beginning to segment those topics so that when the professor is talking, yeah, you do know it's important. That's why he's talking about it. But you now have a very good framework in as to how important these topics are and where exactly they fall in respect of your minimal competency uh, for passing an Applex board exams. The third section in this um, blue, uh, this component of the, the blueprint will be quantities of medication to be compounded, dispensed, and administered. Once again, what kind of topics go under this category? So, uh, at the minimum, you have reconstitution of powders. You have dosage calculations, milli equivalents. So you should know all the equations. You should know the various ways of the. You should be able to determine valence accurately. You should know osmolarity, isotonicity, right? All these are important and you now know where they do fall. So when a professor is presenting to you the concepts about milli equivalents, you don't zone out because you know it's critical. You know it's going to show up on your board exams. You know it's going to show up, even if it doesn't show up on your exams um, during the pharmacy program, it definitely and I'll be surprised if that happens, but you're going to definitely need it on the board exam. So it's important. It keeps you alert in class. The next thing is quantities of ingredients that needed these to be compound, to compound preparations. And here you're basically looking at reducing and enlarging formulas and the aliquot method. Okay. The last component of the calculations category is rates of administration. So, what goes here is basically flow rates, and flow rates is one of the high frequency calculation type questions on the board exams. Okay, so what this actually allows you to do is 
Making use of the blueprint, you can take certain specific actionable steps that can minimize your stress level as you move through the program and also make it so that by the time you are done, you don't need to now review or no, basically relearn or learn new material to pass the board exams. I meet so many students who, I mean, I ask them, so how, how are you going to prepare for the board exams or how are things going in the program? Well, I'm just going to go through, get all my exams done one way or the other. And then when I'm done, I'm going to spend about like six months to, to really prepare for the board exams. Yeah, I do understand that you want to prepare for the board exams and I highly encourage that. But if you actually make use of the blueprint, take some of these actionable steps, then two things are going to happen. First of all, you're going to uh, be very comfortable with the material that's presented to you because you are alert during class. You know the significance of each um, topic that's being presented to you. And don't you think that if you did this for all the other subjects using the blueprint, you kind of will be very clear in your mind exactly where you're going. You know how when we started this conversation, I was saying, do you know where you're going? It becomes really clear. This is the end goal. This is what it's going to take. All right. So let's look at some of these actionable steps. If I had one recommendation that I would tell any student starting the pharmacy program, I would say, go to the website, download the bulletin, or just basically get a hold of this blueprint as soon as you can. Take a look at it, probably um, post it somewhere you see it continually, uh, make mental notes of it, take out those categories or components, and begin to basically assemble all the information that you get in class into those components. Then you begin to see whether you are basically covering the material that you need for your board exams, okay? The next thing that you, actionable step that you can do is, like I was saying, use as a framework. So any lecture, any kind of reading that you do, you begin to organize it into the various sections. So I just did this topic. Okay, this falls on the kinetics. We had a class, we talked about diabetes and how you can treat it. That falls under maybe MTM stuff. All right, so you want to use that as a framework. And trust me, if you do that, you have an organized mind. And you have an organized mind, you're able to perform sublimely better, okay? The third actionable step that you can do is, as you begin to do this, you would identify all the material that you've covered. But more importantly, you begin to see whether there are gaps, you know, that you need to fill. And wouldn't it be great if you could identify that gap earlier on in your curricula, in your, as you matriculate through the program, then wait until the end and you really kind of crunch for time and you need to pass these um, NAPLEX exams and you realize, oh, well, I didn't really pay attention to milli equivalents and it's kind of important right now. I didn't pay attention to TPNs as much. I, I do have some idea, but I'm really not that good. So now I need to study it. What that does is it, it kind of puts too much stress on you at the end at the end of the day. So these are three simple things you could do using the Naplex blueprint to make sure that you are comfortable during the program, you understand how things are going, you see the big picture, and guarantee it could even translate into skyrocketing your performance during the program and are definitely helping you on your board exams. So that's basically what I wanted to share with you in this presentation. I hope it was beneficial for you or it will be beneficial to you. And if you have any questions, as always, you could just send me an email at info at rxcalculations.com or go onto the website and uh, use the contact form and I will be sure to respond to you. So I wish you all the best and um, take care and enjoy your life.